Welcome to 360 Money Matters, where financial planners Billy and Andrew talk all things financial planning. This podcast aims to increase your knowledge and confidence with all things money. Each week, they will cover topics like wealth creation strategies, investment principles, creating passive income, paying off your debt faster, and much, much more, so you can live a life on your terms without limits. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the 360 Money Matters podcast. I'm Billy and I'm joined by the one and only... Patrick. Hi, how are you doing? So in Andrew's absence while he is uh, on the uh, the Greek islands, we've got the uh, the superstar that is Patrick Nong, <laughs> one of the financial advisors and partners here at 360 Financial. So we'll be ripping it on the mic and uh, bringing a whole heap of value to the listeners and the viewers and getting those likes and subscribes up while Andrew's away. So yeah, that's uh, that's my number one goal for this uh, for the next couple of weeks, just to try to outdo Andrew and on all met- metrics. Um, but uh, yeah, I've definitely got some big big shoes to fill, that's for sure. <laughs> so Andrew, if you're listening or watching, look out because uh, Pat's coming for you. So Pat, over to you. What are we talking to everybody about today? So we're talking, um, I guess, the difference between debt, do you clear debt first or do you focus on kind of growing your wealth in anticipation for like retirement planning? So there's a, there's a bit of a... There's a bit of a balancing act with it all because you obviously you don't want to not pay down your debt. Yep. Uh, as, as equally as much important as you want to grow your wealth, you know, in anticipation. And what I always tell clients is there's two big factors, two big assets you have uh, in life. One is uh, your ability to, to generate income, and two is your your time frame until retirement. So the further you are away from that, you know, obviously the more compounding that that happens, and naturally that just means that you've got something bigger to rely upon, uh, and let you know the money kind of do its work and, and work as hard as it can for you as well. So, yeah, that's what the the, the two big things I, I usually talk to clients about. Yep, and this is a really relevant, um, I guess, area that we talk to clients about all of the time. Um, it's one of those things uh, that that sort of pops up. Because you're right, it is the mortgage. It's such a hard thing to get rid of. Obviously, the need to invest to grow your wealth as well. Yeah. So, what we're going to do today is actually run through a client scenario. Um, we've gone and changed all of the details for privacy reasons, but talk through the client scenario. What we were looking at. What are some of the considerations? What are some of the client's goals? And some of the trade-offs because the debt elimination versus investing conversation. Sounds easy on the surface, but there's actually a lot more to it than just the numbers that sit behind it. So we're going to get into it and um, talk through the client scenario and um, yeah, explain sort of how we went through that yep. and eventually where we ended up landing with uh, with it all anyway. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I guess one of the, the things that I always love to talk about, like the, the numbers are the numbers. They, they kind of are very, you know, very unbiased in a sense, in a sense. Um, but the the human element to it all always makes it a little bit more complicated, right? So that's you know working through the psychology of it all, like the behavioural finance side of it. It, it makes it you know it makes our job that much more interesting. <laughs> that's blending the art and the science together, I think, Pat. It. So yeah. it's uh, it's part of the uh, the magic that we do as financial advisors. Yep. Um, and really, some of the time you're looking at sort of what's not said versus what's said and you're trying to dig under the surface to get an understanding of okay if we go one way you know the numbers will say this because you you can't change the numbers they are what they are based on a certain level of assumptions but you know what's your comfort level what's your discomfort level why would you prefer one over the other so yeah there's a bit bit to it but starting off with the client scenario so we were talking to um a couple of clients they were married 45 years of age Mm -hmm. um one member of the household is working the other one is not um, they've got a household income of $120,000 uh, per annum. That's a gross amount. Um, so there is tax still to pay on that and also superannuation um, on top of that as well too because that was obviously a consideration that we looked at. Yep. Um, and the I guess the main liability here was the mortgage, $467,000 on, uh, on their mortgage. Yep, yep. And um, for these guys as well, so they're 45, we... We talked to them in terms of what their plans were for retirement, so the, the time frames to, to retire, and they had a fairly, I guess, indicative time frame of about 15 odd years. Uh, so they wanted to retire at about 60 or so. They're about five years away from kind of being clear of some of the major 
you know hurdles of kids expenditure and things like that as also sending kids to to, to private school i think they, they were sending to, uh, both of them to private school so they were a couple of years off from clearing that hurdle yep. and then obviously for the next 10 odd years thereafter they, they've kind of got you know a fair bit of uh, you know, disposable income to be able to come through and, and do something with so they wanted to be able to map out and plan their the next uh, next decade or so yeah. Yep. No. And um, on that note, I guess what we we're looking at, um, the quite obvious one mm-hmm. um, is how do we line up the elimination of the mortgage repayments in line with that 15 year time frame? Is it possible? Um, based on their current run rate, they've got 25 years left on their mortgage. Mm-hmm. So for us, when we're talking to clients about uh, heading into you know super uh, heading into retirement and thinking about things like accessing your superannuation. Um, whenever we do projections and modelling, I guess the most optimal position that we look at is if you don't have any debt associated with your owner occupier premises, yep. uh, because that's one less expense that you have to factor in. Yep. So when we do look at this, kind of the first port of call that we look at is how do we get rid of any debt that you've got associated with your owner occupier, and can we clear that out? Yeah. And I guess the interesting thing with these particular clients, and we see it more and more uh, nowadays as well, is you know people are getting into debt later in life because you know a home to, yeah. to save up a deposit takes longer to get to that point, especially if you don't you know, have you can't lean on the bank of mum and dad. Um, and so these guys, they started their I think their journey into you know, buying a property in their kind of early forties essentially. So they you know if you map it out in a traditional sense, they would have had thirty years to clear the mortgage, which is you know what most people take up anyway. You know forty plus thirty means that they're retiring, uh, so they're clearing their debt by the time they're in their seventies. Yeah. Uh, assuming they they do just the minimum repayments, and so you know they're a little bit kind of behind the the, bo- the ball in terms of where they want to be. So mm-hmm. retiring at sixty. But obviously, got a debt still yep. projected to it to age seventy. So there's a little bit of a debt elimination strategy element to the whole conversation. But you know, there's like I said, there's a balancing act with with both sides of it. Yeah, and I guess on that front, um, the 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 question that we wanted to answer really, because the mathematical question is, if we are aiming for age sixty being a fifteen year time frame. Yep. Do we then turn around and say, okay, the primary objective, and and this is some of the trade-off conversation that we had, but is the primary objective to reverse engineer and say, okay, you've got 467,000 left on your mortgage, divide the rate back by 15 years, you now need to pay X amount per month, and you'll have it cleared by the time you're 60. So that was sort of the first strategy, Mm. or the first consideration, I should say. The second part of it is, do you still maintain the minimum repayments, mm. any additional that we identified that you needed to clear, yep. to put onto it to clear within 15 years, do you consider putting it into a different type of investment, um, superannuation, investment vehicle, something like that? Mm. And then looking at the projected rate of return, yep. thinking about what it will be worth in 15 years' time, yeah. liquidating a portion of that to then be able to discharge the mortgage at age 60. Yeah. Yep. So that was kind of really the two... I guess main um, scenarios that we looked at when we were calculating the um, yeah yeah the strategy yeah and I guess like I said that the uh, objectively the numbers make sense um, but it's it's kind of delving into the the psychology of you know um, each each person as well because don't forget it's it's the husband and wife in this scenario I think uh, for memory the the husband was all keen for it wife wasn't so keen for it and so it, it is a bit of a, a balancing act like it, like I said in terms of uh, priorities as well because. You know, not every person, not every couple are on the same page with when it comes to these kind of uh, discussions, right? And so you kind of got to navigate the, the complexities of, uh, you know, relationships and, and obviously yeah. the, the, rela- the, the, the numbers themselves. So we might just talk through that in a sec, Pat, but from a mathematical perspective, yep. it's, it's fairly easy um, to do. Um, you've got your interest rate, um, which is almost like your guaranteed after-tax rate of return, Mm -hmm. um, and you can map that out and say, okay, if I put a dollar into my mortgage, Mm -hmm. in this instance, their interest rate's 5.5%, I know that that's going to be my effective rate of return. Um, So from a mathematical perspective, you need to obviously factor in the tax and bits and pieces as well too, but if you then put that same dollar, Mm -hmm. rather than diverting it to your mortgage, you go and put it somewhere else, if you get a rate of return above and beyond not only the 5.5%, but factoring in the applicable taxes as well mm-hmm. too, yep. if the rate of return is higher, then you put it in this bucket rather than that bucket. Yeah. So that makes sense mathematically. And that's what we we're talking about in terms of the numbers 
are the numbers and you can't really change them. It's just the assumptions that you use. That's the easy part for us. Yeah. Let's talk through sort of how we work through, especially in this instance too, because husband and wife are on different sides of the, the page when it came to this, yeah. which is very, very often the case. Mm-hmm. And there's almost a fair bit of... Um, you know, the psychological work where it's like, okay, tell me about your your, your appetite towards money or did your parents yeah, discuss money or, yeah. you know, did you grow up in a financially secure household? Yeah. Let's talk through how we um, how we sort of approach that and yeah. what, what came out of it. Yeah, so I guess, you know, we, we, we came at it with, you know, once again, mapping out the numbers makes absolute sense just to, to begin with, but getting, I guess, a baseline comfort level with the clients as well in terms of how, how they dealt with money how they kind of between them two kind of you know worked out money and things like that um i think the in this instance the wife was the the, the you know the, the purse holder of, of the uh, the budgets and things like that and so for her it, it, it she just wanted you know the bank off her back you know just one less thing to have to worry about you know the kids are going to be obviously any major expenses are going to be clear in the next couple of years for them so they basically wanted to set themselves up for a clear easy run rate you know just be done with it within the next um, 15 odd years makes absolute sense right now the balancing act like i said with it all is is there a better way we you know and this is what we do as advisors we challenge you know sometimes what clients think is rational thinking but it's you know if you look at the numbers purely there's an element of okay is there a smarter way to, to to do this is there a better way to do this right um, and oftentimes there is, uh, and it's it's kind of like the old, uh, you know, the, the fables, like you, you don't know what you don't know, right? And so in, until someone kind of presents another alternative to you to say, hey, if you do this this way yep. and you kind of, you know, use the tax system to your advantage as well, because don't forget with superannuation, there's a there's two there's a two pronged approach with it. Yeah. You you save tax um, that you pay marginally, <clears throat> and then also superannuation gets taxed a lot less than that. And then you know depending on when they're looking to retire. In this case, for these guys, sixty. By the time you've you've got money to be able to access, it becomes tax free on the other side as well. Yeah. So there's a there's a because there's a there's a one way street with with it. And obviously, you want to use the tax system to your advantage, and just kind of knowing the game and knowing how to play it, essentially. Yeah, this um, this scenario was interesting, and I think the reason why they were on different sides of the page is we said right at the start it's a one income household, yeah. so only one person is is generating income, which is the husband. Yeah. So the wife is the one that's that's controlling the household budget essentially. So it it kind of naturally. That was what we were expecting in terms of their position with this. Yep. Um, it even went further because we've got that fifteen-year time frame. Um, it was almost too evident that hey, all we need to talk about here is just eliminating the mortgage, mm-hmm. and we reach sixty, we can access our superannuation, yep. and we're good. Yep. No debt, no kids. Fantastic. Um, we actually took the conversation further and started talking about retirement income. So, okay, great. You achieve your goal, 15-year time frame, tick, no mortgage, kids are off your hands, fantastic. But we extended the conversation further to try and sort of stress test and and, and get um, a deeper understanding of comfort levels around this. Mm. But if you did option A, yep. which is pay off the mortgage versus, say, option B, which is, sorry, accelerate the mortgage repayments and pay it off within 15 years being option A versus option B doing something different. Yep. What level of retirement income would that lead to yep. in fifteen years? So that was really interesting when we had that because mm-hmm. when we did that, the wife actually started thinking a little bit uh, further beyond just "Hey, I want to get rid of the bank off my back mm. or off our backs as quickly as we can." Yeah, yeah, and I guess the 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 other element to it all was because I don't think the I don't think the wife was working. Or had had worked since the kids were born, basically. Yep, yep. So superannuation was was basically non-existent. Um, so you're, you're looking at okay, one income, but also one superannuation to to rely upon. So one asset, uh, other than the house, to re- be able to rely upon going into retirement, right? So you're basically going. You don't have access to two income streams by the time you're at sixty. So you've got one income stream to be able to rely upon. What does that look like? How much do you spend? Yeah. What's the projected run rate? Um, you know, do you does your money outlive you, or do you outlive your 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 money? Right. Um, and that's kind of always the the, the interesting part because it then kind of really hammers home the the difference between 
doing something now versus doing something in five or 10 years time yep. once the mortgage is cleared or whatever it is. Because the last thing you want to do is get to a point where you're unable to work, you're forced to leave the workplace or workforce mm-hmm. and not be able to do anything more with it as well. Right? Yeah. You have no other options, yep. essentially. Your, your options are you know, exhausted. So oftentimes what we talk about is, hey, you know, you might not want to do this, but what we're doing now is we're actually creating options for you yeah. so that you have the, you know, you have the option to go, you know what, I want to continue to work because I, I enjoy working, I, you know, I don't mind the, the work itself. Or if you wanted to retire earlier than initially planned, you've got that as, a, as another lever to be able to pull, pull as well if you need to. Yeah, yeah. And when we were talking about that retirement income, um, I guess it's probably one of those things that... Um, is is just there we tend to be a bit i shouldn't say skeptical about it probably lack of a better word i'm waiting for the coffee to kick in but talking about the age pension Mm -hmm. so as the law currently stands using this scenario accessing the age pension at 67 Mm -hmm. so the theory behind this was finish working at 60 no mortgage whatever we've accumulated in our super we're going to have to make work Mm. until we're 67, until we can get the Mm. age pension. So we mapped out, based on that scenario, what the income, the expected retirement income would be. And then that was an interesting exercise within itself. But once they get to age 67 and move to, in this instance, it was the full age pension, um, the lifestyle that they could expect yeah. The retirement, the, the lifestyle that they could expect based on the retirement income was significantly different. Yeah. And when we actually spoke through that and talked about the, uh, the the current age pension rates, and once again, we don't know what they're going to be in 15 years. Yeah, probably nothing, to be honest. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> even if it's still around, um, that was probably the, the light bulb moment or the game changer yeah. that, that shifted the conversation because it took the priority away from, I guess, the immediate focus, which is what we were talking mm-hmm. to them at the start, was... How do we get the bank off our back? How do we get rid of needing to make a mortgage repayment every month? Mm. That was really the game changer for them. Yep, yep. Yeah, and, and I think that's it's definitely one of those elements where, once again, creating options, you don't want to get to a point where you have no options at that stage yeah, yep. later down the track. And you, 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 know, you come to the realization where what you're spending in terms of you know, what you're used to lifestyle-wise um, and what the age pension provides or can yeah. provide, assuming you still get it and you still qualify for it, and that's a totally different subject all, all on its own, yeah. is going to be quite different. So it, usually it's a bit of a shock to the system. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you, don't, you definitely want to, don't want to get to that point where you've, uh, you're facing, you know, what is it, $30,000 now for a couple, yeah. you know, index over time. Yeah, it's, it's not a heck of a lot of money, to be honest. Yeah, and look, you know, we, we see it all the time with retirees. You know, you, you're losing... Um, that ability to generate income, yep. um, you know, by choice and yep. because of circumstance as well, because you might be too old to continue in your occupation or whatever it may be. Um, but that's a fairly significant psychological shift as well too, because if you do realise that, hey, I am receiving this amount of income yeah. and it's not enough, yeah. really you don't, in most cases, mm-hmm. you don't have a lot of choices in terms of what you can do, what levers you can pull in order to make you can increase that. Yep. So from our perspective, we're always um, really conservative in our numbers and saying, hey, you know, how much do you need in, in retirement income mm-hmm. when you are retired? Mm-hmm. The answer for us is always the more the better mm. um, because the alternative is just almost heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely coming to that realisation if you're, you know, a couple of years away from, from retirement and having seen that number just not go anywhere f- any further than yep, that. It's, yep. a, it's a yeah, it's a it's a big wake up call. Oftentimes, um, but you know, it, it's you know, as long as you as long as you map it out early enough, yeah, and try to spin this in, in a more positive light. Yep. As long as you map it out early enough, yep. um, you know, five years is probably a little short, but you can still do something within that time frame. Mm-hmm. Ten, fifteen is is often ideal, yep. uh, just to be able to give you. You know, more breathing room, more more options, yep. so that by the time you get to that point, you're you've got uh, you know other levers to be able to, to pull, and, and you know you've got other choices essentially as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, ab- absolutely, um, absolutely, Pat. And look, we're huge proponents of receiving advice, and often we see better results and more optimized results mm-hmm. the longer the time frame. So yeah, in terms of what you said about receiving or, or addressing this earlier rather than later that's that's definitely the case but pat on this let's uh let's talk to everybody about where we landed and what we ended up eventually doing 
with the uh, with the strategy because it was kind of these two polar opposites, um, and I guess it took a little while to navigate with them and work through the numbers and crunch the numbers and test some of those um, psychological things yeah. and, and, and the trade-off discussions with people. But yeah. where did we end up landing with this and what was our recommendation in the end? Yeah, so we kind of staged it. So we knew that for the next five years, there's still going to be some some you know expenses for kids and, and schooling and things like that. So we said, hey, it's better to do something than nothing and sit for another five years. Yep. So we said, okay, let's try to put a little bit extra into superannuation. And you know, for these guys, they still had plenty of, of options in terms of how much they could, could contribute into yep. super. Um, so we you know, added a little bit extra into superannuation there for the next five years. And then after five years where they're clear of you know private school and all the other headaches, <laughs> as Billy would uh, att- attest to, I'm sure. Um, I hope my kids aren't watching this, Pat. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all the other expenses when, when it comes to kids, um, they're obviously they've got plenty more breathing room thereafter. So yeah. they've got then from you know the next five years onwards, ten years really to 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 to, uh, to do something with. Um, then we kind of really put the, the hammer down, put yeah. the, the foot to the accelerator, so to speak, and and really um, maximize that as much as you can into superannuation. So just chip it, chip in as much pre tax into super. So just to be clear. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, I guess what that meant for them was it meant that they had an extra easily a couple hundred thousand dollars more by the yep. time they're, you know, going into retirement. Yep. Um, they're still, you know, they're, they're, you know, we're still saying for them, chip, keep chip, chipping away at your, your, uh, your home mortgage. So that's still, you know, the ultimate objective is to clear that. So, you know, keep doing that. And then essentially after that fact, so let's say you're at 60 and you, you, you've effectively retired, um, they then, if they do decide to, to retire, they yep. then got access to superannuation to then use some of that money to clear the remainder of the debt, um, expunge the debt altogether. Yep. So there's, it, and don't forget, the money at that point thereafter is tax-free yep. as well, assuming they have retired and yep. meet the, all the conditions of release and, and that kind of thing. The money is there is then tax free, so they basically can take the extra surplus money out that they wouldn't have had, you know, and then yep. some yep. to take that money out, expunge the debt, get the bank off their back finally, and then there's still net net difference yep. is actually they're still in a, a much better position had they just yep. you know just cleared the the debt uh, you know within that time frame as well. Yeah. Yeah, so for them, you know, kind of coming to the realization where there's other ways, smarter ways to, to utilize money and yep. utilize the tax system and superannuation and all the other kind of intricacies of, you know, finance essentially. Um, not not to overcomplicate it, but it's it's certainly um, one area that you know, once again, if you don't realize, you don't know, you kind of just doing for most people what their parents would have done. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, yep. my, I'm, my parents were guilty of that. Um, they just go, yep, we're just going to clear the, the debt. And had I had I been in a position to be able to advise them, or they take advice in that instance as well, uh, because I think I would have been like, you know, what is it, fifteen, sixteen, or something. Yeah, at the time. too young, out the way. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, um, yeah. So in terms of that, they, they would have been in a much better, better position as well. Yeah. Yep. And I think just the um, probably just the added benefit to this was also which they didn't anticipate. Um, this would be a benefit of coming to talk to us mm. was going that one step further around retirement income mm-hmm. and then stress testing that and saying, well, hang on a sec, that's actually the ultimate objective mm. here is how do we increase that yeah. as best as we can and, and keep it up there for as long as possible yeah. um, because that's the thing that's really going to make the difference from a, a retirement lifestyle perspective. Um, and just the level of um, comfort that they felt afterwards and the reassurance that they felt yeah. out of the back of it was um yeah it was pretty rewarding um i must so, say yeah. and pretty happy with the the result yeah. um from our perspective in terms of delivering advice and seeing the um the response from the the clients as well too and they were so stoked they gave us um they introduced us to um a couple of their friends as well yeah, too so we've got a similar sort of conversation happening with um with some of their friends as well too so yeah got um got referred to another um few people which is great yeah yeah and i think what one of the, the with these guys, they were a little bit uh, a little bit closed off to begin with, so it took them a bit of time to warm up. Uh, certainly, and you know, oftentimes I try to talk about you know all the other things that they want to do. So kind of, hey, if if you were completely clear of debt, what would you do, and and that kind of thing. And these guys were just kind of very focused on just the one element, which is clear the debt, and we'll talk about the next step steps later. After we kind of gave them the the outline of the strategy and kind of go, hey, by the way, we can give you an extra 
you know, however, however yep. much, I can't remember the numbers, however much by the time you're in retirement, it opened up the conversation a lot more. So for them, it's like, okay, we want to make sure that our kids are looked after. We want to make sure that then, you know, if anything should happen to us, that they they get the money in the right way. So, you know, estate planning kind of conversations. And then for them as well, it's like they've never actually traveled overseas or they haven't done any yeah, extensive yeah, travel. So yeah. it's, it's then kind of going, hey, we want to spend an extra $10,000 a year to travel doing whatever it is and, you know, all the stuff that they would have foregone essentially had they not you know talk to, to us and obviously look to, to map out their strategy in a, in a more comprehensive way as well so um much more valuable conversation for for us just because I, I i love talking to clients and seeing the the, the impact that we can have yeah. for clients and obviously the the, the positive um uh, repercussions of it of, of seeking advice and so yeah it's kind of now going wh- where to next where do you want to go what do you want to do yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. so yeah that's that's always the exciting part nah, good work pat well said well summarized andrew i think you're in some trouble here with uh, <laughs> with our new co-host <laughs> um, to our viewers and our listeners, thanks for uh, thanks for your time. Um, like and subscribe as always, Pat. To you, thank you for uh, for jumping on today. Uh, um, it was uh, it was definitely a pleasure and, and hearing the experience with the clients. Yeah, yeah. And um, we'll catch everybody on the uh, on the next one. Thanks all. Thanks for listening today. If you have any questions on what we've talked about or would like to have a chat about your money journey, visit us at 360fs.com.au. Just a reminder to our listeners that the information contained in this podcast is general in nature and it is not intended as personal recommendations for the audience. Please consider whether the information suits your circumstances before acting on it. This information is provided by Billy Amaritas and Andrew Nicolaou of 360 Financial Strategists Proprietary Limited, authorised representatives and credit representatives of AMP Financial Planning.